Howdy. How's everybody today? I hope this finds you well and happy and weather doing well where you are. It's not so great here. It's cooling back down again. We had temperatures near 80 the other day and now we're back down in the 30s. Holy smoke. I could do without this. Mother Nature needs to get her act together. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making a dream catcher out of a bangle bracelet. And I'm trying to thread up a needle here. And I'm using some of this filament thread. And it's nice thread because you don't see it. It's it's uh, kind of transparent type thread. You could use any kind of thread you want to use. I like using the transparent if I have it because then it's not actually seen on the project. And I'm going to thread this needle up real good here. And I'm going to use double thread. So that's, you know, you thread it through and it's one strand on each side of the hole in the needle. Then I'm going to come down to the end of it and put a knot. At least that's what I'm going to try to do. Since you can't see this thread hardly, it makes it difficult to get it knotted up. Oh, come on, work with me here. Well, put my fingers a little bit and try that again. Easier for me to say than do, apparently. <laughs> oh, come on. My goodness. Okay. Got the two ends of it right here. I'm going to roll them over each other and pull it through. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm working with cat hands is not helping me. You know, I got arthritis in my thumb so bad that they don't want to bend the directions that I want them to go. Well, come on. This is going to be the hardest part of the whole thing, just tying a knot in the end of the thread. There we go. Got it knotted once. Now, I, I put two or three knots in it, you know, make sure that I got it tied good. Once you get it tied once, it's not so hard to go back. And there we go. Got it knotted real good there. On the end, I'm going to put one more in it for good measure. I'm going to be four knots. In the end of it, because this is really, really fine thread. There we go. Now, we got that knotted up. I'll lay that to one side. This is a bangle bracelet, in case you didn't know what they are. They're just little, little metal bracelets. And they come in you know, different circumferences. This is too small to go over my big old hands, but, um, you know, for a child, they'd probably be about the right size, but you can get them in different sizes for adults and all that. I just happen to have a big old stack of these old bangle bracelets laying around here, and they're not doing anything because I can't wear them, so I thought they would make some pretty dream catchers. You can use anything that's circular to make a dream catcher out of. You can even take plastic lids off margarine tubs and stuff, cut the centers out, and then you know, wrap something all around the, the edges of it. And uh, then it's a circle ready to make a dream catcher, any kind of dream catcher you want to make. And I like these bangles because they're already pretty on the edges. You know, I've got, there's a, a bunch of different kinds here. You can see they've got different designs on the edges and stuff on them. And I that way I don't feel like I need to wrap them with anything. You just leave them pretty the way they are. But you can wrap them if you so choose to do so. Now, what I'm going to do to make my dream catcher is I'm going to take the center of a doily to put in the middle of it. That's why I need the, the needle and thread, because I'm going to sew the doily to the bangle. And don't be afraid to cut doilies up. A lot of people are, oh, I don't want to cut them. These aren't old doilies to begin with. If they were um, vintage, then I'd be a little more apt not to, to cut on them. But these I got from either wish.com or aliexpress i don't know which one i get stuff from both places but here's how you cut them you take a pair of scissors and you figure out where you know what uh, circumference that you want and i know from putting that up there to the bracelet that i want to cut them right here in this section so i'm going to take my scissors and just cut 
each little section there where the, it attaches. See how that was? It attached right to the center part. I'm just going to cut it loose. Now, it's not going to unravel. You don't need to worry about, oh, it's going to fall apart if I do that. No, it won't fall apart. And the, the outer edge of this I'll use on another project down the line. I'll make a nice little lacy flounce, or I could make a flower out of that for a package. Just by running a gathering stitch on it. A lot of different things you can do with that. So don't throw your scraps out. You just keep cutting, working your way around. You probably hear Fred. I'm hoping that the microphone is not picking him up. He's decided to have a fit because he thinks that I need to be in the office with him today. And in case you're new here, Fred's my cocktail. He thinks he's my co-host. And I will admit he is the best co-host I've ever had, but <laughs> he is temperamental. Just going to keep working our way around until we get this cut out here. I'm just about done. Four more little sections to cut through. And there it is. Now, there's the scrap that we cut off of it. If I run a gathering stitch around the edge of that, I could gather that up and make a flower for a package or cut it and make it a little lacy flounce for something, a box or what have you. But now this fits right. Well, I'll tell you what, this is the best way to show it. Right there like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and this is a big old darning needle. You can use whatever size needle you want to use. I like these because they fit my hand a little bit better for this kind of a project. And what we want to do is sew it right to the bracelet. So I'm going to hold it up there. I'm going to run the needle through it. Now to start it, I want to run this thread right up to the end. And then I'm going to put my needle through the middle of the thread there where right above where I knotted it. See, and it'll that'll hold it tight. That's why I wanted a really good knot in there. I don't want to be pulling on the thread and then um, have my knots pull out. I want it held to the piece. And then you just make a little whip stitch. And since this is transparent thread, nobody's going to see the thread. See, that's the beauty of it. And just keep working your way around. Keeping the doily right up there to the bracelet. And the only bad part about this is, since it is a transparent thread, it's kind of difficult to see where you, you pull through. See, I mark it kind of with my thumb. See how I've got my thumb right there next to where the thread comes out. Thread's coming out right here. And I got my thumb right next to that, so I know where, where it left off. And I'm going about, I don't know, a half an inch apart on my stitches, I guess, a quarter to a half inch. And I keep pulling up on that thread. Since you can't see it, you're going to have to pull on it to make sure you got it good and tight. I know it's difficult for you to see. If it's difficult for me to see, you're probably not picking up a whole lot of that on the camera itself, but it won't take long to work around this piece. And that's going to be the start of our dream catcher. That's the ring with the design in the center.
then we're going to make the tail for it and with that i'm going to be using some wool roving and you see that laying right here i have several different colors but i kind of lean in toward the blue today I, I think that blue color is really pretty now the roving you can get all over the place um, any place that sells spinning supplies will have it um, you can type it into google or any of your search engines for wool roving and it'll bring it up several places on etsy have it if you have uh, fiber festivals in your area you can pick it up at a fiber festival that's what i usually do we have a yearly fiber festival here in my town and um, i'll get my wool roving right there at the fiber festival that way you can kind of pick and choose what kind you like and you know feel the different grades of wool different sheep produce different kinds of wool and and uh, it's going to feel differently varying by what sheep have produced it Yeah, I'm just about back around. A little tail there that didn't that I didn't where I didn't get it tight enough someplace along the line. So let me pull that up and see if I can put a knot in that and tie that off. Yeah, easy for me to say. I couldn't tie a knot in the tail. It makes me think I'm gonna tie a knot in that. Uh <laughs> There. Let's do it this way. If I put something of color behind that, it might make it a little easier. Well, not really because I've got something color behind it, the brown mat, and it's still not showing up good. So we'll just have to force myself to view this. There we go. Got that. Come back and do it again. Oh, for goodness sakes. All right. Finish whipping over that. Whip it all down. Whip it. Whip it good. Now, make a little tie off in it. And clip it off. Okay. Let's see a little place there needs trimmed. All right, so now we've got a ring and we've got our little flower center doily poke in that. Now you've got to make some tails. I'm going to set my needle and thread off to one side here and just pull a little bit of your roving off of the bat. That makes you fold it over, it makes your little tail. And I'm going to come up right between some place where I sewed it here. Like that. We're going to put a lark spur in it. You know what a lark spur is, don't you? You got a loop, you take your tails, and you put them through the loop. And then you pull it tight. Where it's not even here, we just kind of pull that section off. Now, we've got one. I think I want to put three on this, so we'll get a couple more sections of roving going. 
Roving is what you use to spin to make yarn out of. Do use it in all kinds of projects though. Now I'm going to come up just a little bit from that and find another little gap there between where I sewed it. That's why I don't want to sew it too terrible close and tight because I want to work the roving in there. And we pull that up through. You have your hole. You stick your little tails through the hole. And then you pull it tight. There's two. And here's the third piece. Double it over. And I check to make sure you're about equidistant there from this one over to this one. Keep this one in the center. And find a little gap in your thread. Poke this through. Find your center. Open it up. Put the tails through. And pull it tight. Then you even these up. I like to lay it down on the desk so that I get a good bird's eye view of it. You can stroke them down there where I want them to go. Now I see another little tail there on my thread. We'll get that trimmed off. Okay, there's that. Now, you want to do some beads. I got these up at the Walmart. You can get packages of beads any place that they sell craft supplies. Any kind of beads you want. You can use glass beads, wood beads, plastic beads, pony beads. Um, seed beads are probably a little bit too small for this, but you could sew some seed beads in the center of it to, to make a little design. You know, however fancy you want to make it. That's up to you. And this is a brand new pack here that I have not even opened yet. So we'll get it opened up. It has a Ziploc closure here on the top of it. Keep me from spilling beads everywhere. So let's get a selection of beads out here on the table. And I think I'm probably going to use the bigger beads. So let me get a few more out. I'll thread through my roving a little better. And we'll sort out some bigger beads. I like these lighter colored ones, I think, on that. Since it's got the white doily in the center of it. And I think I'm going to need a couple more of those. So let me dig a couple more out of the pack. There we go. Because we have six tails, two from each of the pieces of roving. So six beads. And I'll put these little beads back in the package. Seal it up and set it over one side so I don't spill them. And I see a lone star piece of thread hanging there. We'll get that clipped off. All right. So now we have our six little tails of roving. Now you wouldn't have to do them six tails. You could just do them one if you want. As a matter of fact, it might be easier for me to do them that way just as one tail a piece since this is a small one if this was a great big dream catcher i would do it stray bead here i would do it two tails but since it's a small one i'm thinking one tail will probably be enough so i'm going to twist this right at the end to tighten it up so I can thread the bead onto it. Thing right here at the very end. Make it tight. The 
Let's see if we can get this to thread through. Well, didn't get it tight enough yet. If you get it good and tight, it should thread right into that bead. I have done this before, so I know from whence I speak, but getting it tight sometimes is the issue. What I do is I just wet my fingers and keep squeezing until you get it tightened up to slide through. Now, if it's going to be too difficult, I'm going to have to thread it on the needle. And I may have to do that because I'm not going to take all day fooling with it. More than one way to skin a cat. We'll thread it on the needle and then we'll poke it through there. See, just like that. I'm going to slide it toward the end of the rowing. I have a little knot in it there now where I was trying to get it to thread through, so we'll get rid of that. Now, let's get this so it'll go in on the needle. Spin it up there enough to thread. Grab a bead, pull it through, slide that down toward the end. One more, twist it around. Put it through the eye of the needle. Poke a bead on it. Pull it through. And then pull your bead down toward the end. Okay, so we got that far. Now, going to embellish it a little bit more. Got little pieces of thread on my roving from my doily. Pull that off of there. The doily threads. Where I trimmed the doily up. Now, set those three beads aside that I didn't use. I'll put them back in the sack. Now, I got these pretty, really pretty feathers. Fluffy white feathers. And I'm going to pull some of those out of the sack to hang on it. Two and three. And I'm not sure where I got these feathers from. I buy feathers from a lot of different sources when I'm buying craft supplies. So you can get them any place craft supplies are sold. That's all I can tell you. See, now this is how it's going to go. I'm going to be putting a little bit of glue on the feathers to hold them in there. And it'll hold it right there along with the roving right in that hole. See? That's how it's going to look. So we're going to need a little bit of glue. And let me get a touch of glue going here. Any kind of glue. It doesn't matter. Aline's or uh, Elmer's. I don't go with anything as fancy as E6000 for something like this. <laughs> you just use a little dab. You just want it to hold the feather in there. And if I can get my glue bottle open. Holy smoke. There we go. Shake it down. This is just a bottle of Elmer's. I happen to have on the desk. There we go. See, just a 
just a dab that's way more than I need because all you're going to do is take the shaft of the feather dip it in the glue and then you're going to stick it up in that hole of the bead and that's going to hold it in place and do that with all three feathers And like I say, you can get as fancy with that doily as you want. If you want to add beads to that or, you know, what whatever you would like to do. I like it just the way it is because this is a raised flower pattern on that doily. And I think it looks really pretty just as it is. So I'm going to leave mine alone. But depending upon what kind of doily you use, you might want to embellish it a little bit. Some are plainer than others. Oh, now, come on. My fingers are sticky. Just right up in there. Don't give me no grief. There we go. You know you want to. All right. Now, I'll fluff this one out a little bit. There next to the bead. There we go. And now the only thing left is to put a hanger on the top of it. And you can use whatever you want to use for a hanger. Um, I'm going to wipe this glue off my desk before I drag everything that I've got through the through the glue. <laughs> Have it all over me and the roving and everything here. All right, so we got that cleaned up. And I'm going to use, I think, a little bit of this roving for a hanger. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull it loose. Double it over. And then I'm just going to kind of finger spin it. Just twist it around and around and around itself. Just like spinning it to make yarn out of it. Just making a thread. Doesn't have to be real tight. I'll double it over. See how that just kind of spins around itself to, to ply. Just twist the ends of it down. Now I'm going to come up here to the top. The top is directly above this middle one down on the bottom. See, here's the bottom one. So your top would be right up here. And I'm going to come in between the doily and the bracelet and push that down through to the back. Pull those little tails up through like that. I'm going to take sort of a lark spur. I'm going to pull it down through and then I'm going to push it back down between the bracelet and the doily again. And pull it through to the back. Here's the back side. Then I'm going to put a knot in it. Easier said than done. I need to pull it up just a little bit more. There we go. And put a knot in it. There we go. Now it's cooperating.
just like that. Then I'm going to cut the little tail part off there from the knot. And there it is. Now that's the back side. So you turn it over this side and you don't see the knot. You've got your loop to hang it up with. You got your tails with your feathers. You got your pretty little doily there in the center of it. And there it is, all ready to hang up on the wall. And that's how you make a doily out of a bracelet and a dream catcher. Or a, uh, a bracelet and a doily, you make a dream catcher. Wow. Got my tongue all tied up. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Share it on your social media so everybody gets to see how to be creative. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you. And check out my Etsy store. I have a lot of pretty things for sale up on my Etsy store right now. And more things are coming. Be sure and check out my Patreon page. I'm going to be putting videos up on that this week. I've got some up already. I give gifts out every month um, in a drawing to each level of Patreon um, patronage that has been donated. It helps me buy craft supplies so that I can keep bringing you these videos. And uh, there is a PayPal donation if you feel so inclined that you would like to donate to uh, my craft endeavor here. You can always send it through the PayPal. And uh, let's see, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I do a Twitch show Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I do a live at YouTube at 8 p.m. on Mondays Eastern Time. And with all that being said, I think there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda.